Hello everybody, hope you are all safe and well. Pete here, it's actually good morning and not good night, just in case you're wondering, it's still dark. I am up brave and early. Uh, I'm going to Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure today. I stayed at Royal Pacific Resort last night here on property at Universal. One of the benefits of that is early park admission so you get into the parks an hour before other guests therefore I thought I'd get up early and make my way over to the parks share the experience with you guys and let you know how it goes yep welcome to day two as well it's day two of my mini vlog series I'm currently on the walkway path between Royal Pacific Resort and Universal um, it's only about a five ten minute walk dead easy and short walk you've got the option of also a shuttle bus and a water taxi. I'm not sure if they are operational at this time. It is very early. I'm far too early to get here for LA Park admission to be honest. It's currently 25 to 7. Uh, LA Park admission opens one hour before gate opening. Uh, gate opening for general admission today is 9am so LA Park admission is at 8am and LA Park admission rotates between the two parks today to Islands of Adventure. Uh, it, it, more than often than not, it's more common to be Islands of Adventure than Universal Studios. Um, I assume the reason for that is because that's where Hagrid's is and it's the longest queue, so it gives people the advantage of getting a shorter wait time. So to qualify for LA Park admission, you can get that through staying at a hotel on Universal property or if you have an annual pass that is one of the top two tiers that's either preferred or premier that also makes you eligible for early park admission so with a couple of people sitting there at the moment i imagine that the queue might even start here in terms of might be a wee queue to go through security and then a wee flood to the gate i don't know we'll see we'll find out i'm going to find out for you and share all the top tips that's what i'll do so for early park admission not all the rides are open um, for Islands of Adventure today, it's primarily the Hogsmeade area that's open. Uh, it is the most popular area of the park, so if you want to sort of explore it on a quiet occasion, this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, the rides that will be open this morning for the first hour are Hagrid's, as mentioned, Forbidden Journey in the Harry Potter Land, Flight of the Hippogriff in the Harry Potter Land, and also the Flossa Coaster. So Flossa Coaster would also generally have a high wait time too, so it's an excellent opportunity to tick off two of the most popular rides in the park and also explore Hogsmeade whilst it's quiet. So that's us in Islands of Adventure at 7am. So first little tip, uh, security doors open at 7 o'clock, not before. Um, a small queue did form and I heard other guests talking that the last couple of days um, a longer queue had formed. So Tip number one, key point number one. <laughs> Remember, security opens at seven o'clock and a little queue will form there potentially before seven o'clock. Just making my way to the gate. There's nobody in line at all at the moment. Um, I'll kind of update you on that throughout the next hour before park actually opens. But at the moment, we're at the park entry and nobody in the queue. So, looks like we'll be first in line almost. So we've just been let in at 10 to 8. Um, it's a bit chaotic, a bit manic. Um, apparently you're not allowed to run. <laughs> but it looks like you can. A bit of rule breaking going on. A bit of fast walking. I think I'll just sort of fast walk. Uh, without question, I will get on Hagrid's. Provided that it's up and running, there's no delay. I'll get on it relatively quickly, I believe. Um, 
so yeah, here we go. Quite exciting, quite enjoyed that. Real buzz and good vibe, first thing in the morning. That is the Hulk testing already. It's not open till nine o'clock. This is the pit when the staff are quite strict about making you walk. At the entrance of Sue's Landing is when you need your hotel room key or your annual pass to, it's the kind of checkpoint just to see that you qualify for early park entry. There's quite a few staff around there. Uh, <laughs> they're telling everyone to stop running and then everyone starts running when they get past them. So the ground's quite wet so maybe a few slips. So we are diverted to get into the queue for Hagrid's. It's five to eight and I'm entering the queue. So it's five to eight, that's me entered the official line for Hagrid's. Um, it's not the official Hagrid's queue, it's obviously kind of sectioned off for the, the manic and the chaos, which is Ellie Park admission. Um, there was a signpost saying 30 minutes. I'm not sure if it was 30 minutes from that post. I'm not sure if it was 30 minutes from that point or they just assume that straight away it's going to be a 30 minute wait uh, regardless because there's so many people here but um, yeah, time will tell I think we should be on and off in the next 5 or 10 minutes quite a few people did run by me but um, not that much so we'll see here we go You are able to bring a fanny pack or a bum bag with you on the ride as long as it's a three prong fanny pack. If you have anything bigger, you need to put it into the lockers. So advice would be, don't have anything bigger than a fanny pack and it means you wouldn't have to use the lockers. There's lockers to your right and lockers to your left. The lockers to the left are significantly quieter. Oh, and I'd be grateful if you didn't mention any of them. Brilliant fun. On and off in five minutes. Absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. Straight walk on, on and off in five minutes. Brilliant ride. Love, love, love Hagrid's. Well, it's ten past eight and that's me on and off Hagrid's. Absolutely superb. There she goes. Well, the hair definitely looks a little bit windswept. Um, that was brilliant. Really, really enjoy Hagrid's. Um, straight on. I wonder, it's probably not even that long a queue to go on again now, I would imagine. Uh, but I think I'm just going to enjoy the park while well, it's quiet and I'll do a little bit of exploring. Now, bear in mind, um, sometimes the rides do go down. I think I mentioned that. Sometimes there's delays, so sometimes you do have a bit of bad luck and Hagrid's doesn't start straight away which can be a nightmare for me it was perfect we literally just kept on walking I never stopped until I sat down and the day was my first time on the bike when you're riding Hagrid's you can go on the bike or the sidecar and I got on the bike which was fantastic um, excellent buzzing buzzing after that super job Worth getting up so early? Yeah, I'd say so, I'd say so. Uh, you do have to bear in mind that, you know, we did wait for an hour in the queue to get into the park. So it's not that you don't have to queue as such, um, but we got there first thing, very front of line, uh, couldn't really have got there earlier. Uh, Flight of the Hippogriff also opens at eight o'clock. Whereas Forbidden Journey doesn't open till 8.30. So you can go on Hagrid's at 8 o'clock, Flight of a Hippogriff at 8 o'clock, Forbidden Journey at 8.30. Hello, morning. A little interaction there with the Universal staff. Just shows you how quiet it is here first thing in the morning. Though there's a few clouds in the sky. Come on, sunshine state of Florida. Where's the sunshine? Just making my way through to Jurassic Park. Not all of the park is open at this time of the day. It's only the Hogsmeade section up to just under the Jurassic Park gates at the entrance to Velocicoaster, which is currently showing a 15 minute wait. 
So it's now 20 past 8, I've made my way around to Philosopher Coaster, which is shown a 15 minute way, which practically means a walk on. I've never done this ride and I'm not too sure about doing it this morning to be honest, uh, but we'll have a wee look and see. Just a bit of a scaredy cat, I don't know why, I think the likes of Hagrid's and the Mummy is almost my top threshold. I mean I certainly can go on these rides, but I just don't enjoy them just yet. We have made it round to Blosser Coaster, but I'm sorry guys, I just don't think I've got the bravery this morning. Uh, the nerves are there. Um, such is life. Go on, give me some, some grief in the comments. I don't mind. Uh, pathetic. Pathetic again, but I don't know, I might go on it later on. We'll see. There's the top hat going down. That's not even the bit that I'm scared of. I don't know what I'm scared of. It's just been told that it's so intense and fast and uh, you know what there's there's one thing that will make me go on Floss Coaster. Um, there's been a few people that have maybe said to me they join me. There's a few friends of mine that I've kind of mentioned that they might join me in one of these trips. So if one of my friends does join me in one of these trips I promise to go on Floss Coaster at that point to enjoy it. Um, Makes no difference to you guys, I suppose, whether I get one or not. It'd be nice for me, just a wee moment, but there you go. And I don't need anyone to hold my hand as such. It's just if someone comes along, it'd be a bit rubbish for them, me sitting at the side. It's more enjoyable, I'm sure, if the two of you go on the ride, if everyone goes on and enjoys it. Uh, but each to their own. Look, if roller coasters are not for you, then you never feel overly pressured to go on them. It's your day at the parks. You do what you want to do. You enjoy it and make the most out of it in a way that you prefer best, don't ever feel pressure to do it. It is now 25 past 8, Hagrid's has now shown a 90 minute wait already, so yeah, it was possibly worthwhile getting up and waiting that hour. I'm going to head now back to Forbidden Journey, it opens at half 8, that is a fantastic enjoyable ride, I'm going to go and enjoy myself a ride without fear, without nerves. <laughs> so the ride opens at half past eight. That's the Harry Potter Forbidden Journey ride. However, they do let you go in the queue shortly before. So on the wait time, it is still showing opens at 8.30. Still showing opens at 8.30 a.m. on the wait time, but you can go in and queue and walk through the queue area. The Express pass lane is not open at this time in the morning. Forbidden Journey is lots and lots of fun every time. Uh, can't get enough of that one. Um, I'm now just going to wander along to the Jurassic Park section away from Hogsmeade. It's now 10 to 9. So the rest of the park will open at 9 o'clock, so a key tip or a bit of advice for early park admission is that at 9 o'clock when the rest of the park opens, take that opportunity to nip on a couple of rides straight away. All the regular guests will be coming in at that time, however, it's obviously going to be still quiet, so take advantage of that. Once you've done what you will do in early park admission, just make your way along to either the Jurassic Park area, or where the Hulk is at the start of the park. Problem is, if you're at where the Hulk is at the start of the park, all the regular guests will be there as well. And as you can see, it's just this area here. There's the Velocity Coaster sign. Just, just next to the Velocity Coaster sign is a member of staff and a grey barrier. That barrier will be removed in five minutes. So you can see there's a few folks just gonna loitering around like myself waiting for that barrier to be opened and then we will walk through to the rest of the park. First in means no wait times. Happy days. I touched on it a moment ago but I just want to touch on it again. When you come to the parks here in Orlando you're coming here to enjoy yourself. So do whatever makes you happy. If that's going on the big massive thrill rides then do it. If it's going on the little rides then do it or watching the shows don't ever feel pressure to do something that you don't necessarily want to do. And I know that may sound a bit hypocritical because I'm always quite nervous and anxious and worried about going on rides, but I just want to kind of swallow that fear a little bit and, I don't know, just enjoy it. When I was a kid, when I was young, I didn't do any of the skate rides. I'm not sure if it was nerves, anxiety, worry, whatever it might have been, I just couldn't do it. 
and I felt this sense of um, embarrassment, like which is completely and utterly wrong. Uh, however, now as an adult, a bit wiser, uh, I think, uh, mind over matter a little bit, I just like to face the fears a wee bit, and I'm starting to discover that uh, the super, super thrill rides I almost don't enjoy at the moment. I might do if I go on them a little more. However, the sort of rides like Hagrid's or the Mummy that are kind of not as quick or thrilling as the Lost Coast of the Hulk, I do tend to enjoy a bit more. They've also got a lot better theming. It might be one of those reasons, I'm not sure, but certainly for yourself, guys, just do what makes you happy. And there's loads here at the theme parks in Orlando, all ages, all sort of requirements are met. So just come and have fun. There we go. Come and have fun, that's my idea. Just come over to Orlando and have fun. So a little queue built up, just a little crowd of people, and then we were allowed in at nine o'clock. So I think everyone's just making their way around to their preferred ride. There's River Adventure. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna go on that. The sun's not out at the moment, so getting wet, uh, you're not gonna dry that easily. I think I'm gonna go on Skull Island Reign of Kong. Uh, provided it's open, I'm hoping it's open. I think it's open. 9.30. Ah, nightmare. Do your research. <laughs> so yeah, not every raid opens at 9 o'clock. Um, I thought it did, to be honest. Uh, but Rain of Kong is 9.30. So what I'm going to do now is grab myself some breakfast because I'm starving. Um, if you know me, you know that I do not eat before coasters. <laughs> I've got bit of a dodgy stomach so yeah uh, yeah so bear in mind guys when doing early park admission not every ride opens at the same time so do a little bit of research something I probably should have done but hey ho we don't let it get us down we just continue and enjoy our day uh, so yep I'm gonna grab myself something to eat now for breakfast um, I'm on a budget trip as always so I'm gonna try and get something budget friendly which is hard to do in the theme parks but um, I did do a little bit of research on this and I believe uh, I've got a nice little breakfast idea for a budget friendly breakfast around in Hogsmeade. Let's go check that out. It is 10 past 9, the park is now fully open to all guests. So it'll be interesting to see what the wait times are at the moment. There we go, we've got Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike at 105 minutes. Flight of Hippogriff, 35 minutes. Forbidden Journey is still short at 15 minutes. And the Hogwarts Express is only 10 minutes, as you'd expect. The Hulk, 50 minutes. And the Velocicoaster Coaster is up to 65 minutes. So there you go. High queue times already. That's a combination of guests coming in for early park mission plus the regular guests have now entered the theme park. Our budget breakfast will be in the Three Broomsticks this morning. So we are here in the Three Broomsticks for my budget breakfast. Today my budget breakfast is a cup of water, which is free, but I love drinking water so that suits me perfect. And I ordered a it's classed as a side of roasted potatoes, so a portion of breakfast potatoes, and that cost me a total of $4.99 plus tax, it's $5.31. These potatoes I saw recommended on YouTube, they look delicious, they smell delicious, I shall let you know how they taste in just a moment. So guys, we are now at 25 to 10. Yep, just after 25 to 10, and you can already sense the parking a lot busier. Um, just had my breakfast potatoes there and three broomsticks. And for $5.31, that's a nice little breakfast. Um, if you are really hungry, it won't be a big enough portion for you, that is for sure. However, uh, in the heating things, my appetite's never that great, so, uh, it's a nice little portion. It's not advertised on the menu as such. There's four different breakfast options and they're all like $18 plus tax. But if you just ask for a portion of breakfast potatoes, um, they, will, they will 
provide them. It's just that I think it's from the side order menu, um, so that was good. It was a sort of like skin on potatoes, either fried or roasted. Uh, it's called roasted, I'm guessing they might be roasted then fried. Uh, but either way, there was a kind of herbs over them as well, so maybe salt and seasoning and some herbs. They were absolutely spot on. For me, a solid four out of five. A cheap little light budget breakfast. Perfect. And the sun's come out as well. Happy days. We are in our element. So, made my way back around to Skull Island Rain of Kong. Now that it's open, I'm going to jump on and enjoy this one. Skull Island Rain of Kong is a great little attraction. Um, please be reminded if you're sitting at the edge, you may get a little wet. I got a few splashes at one point, I was a bit surprised. But there you go, enjoyed it nonetheless. The sun is shining now, absolutely gorgeous here in Orlando. Happy days, I've got my sun cream on. A little breeze as well, keeping us cool. It's an absolute beautiful day here in Orlando in February. Uh, this time of year is perfect to visit Orlando. You still get hot temperatures, warm sunshine, yet a lot less humidity, so I feel it's a lot more comfortable. Uh, so if you're planning what time to come during the year, do consider the humidity levels, not just the temperature. Perfect time at the moment. Hey guys, that will do me for early park admission. Um, I am making my way to the exit gate. Had a fantastic morning. I would absolutely recommend taking advantage of early park admission if you are eligible. Uh, remember that through a staying at a hotel on site at Universal or one of the top two tier annual passes also make you eligible for early park admission. Um, there's one or two other ways you can get it too, but they are the two most popular ways. So certainly take advantage, come in the parks early, enjoy it. It's currently 10 a.m. The parks have been open for one hour so far. And it's still very busy at entry. Still quite a lot of queues to get in. I'm guessing that will be the case for an hour or two yet. What well, is, of course, quiet. Uh, an hour after park entry is um, the exit, <laughs> which we're going to use now. Well, folks, what an absolute super morning I have had here at Islands of Adventure for early park admission. Just to recap, I arrived at the security desk at quarter to seven, which was far too early. Didn't open till seven. A little queue did form, but I think it was just a wee bit too early. We got in through security at seven, and that made us first in line at park entry at around quarter to eight. The, the Universal staff were kind enough to let us in through the gate. Um, a little bit of chaos then started, people running uh, or walking fast. Um, and then we're told not to, because it's not really allowed for obvious reasons for people falling over and things. I then made my way around to Hagrid's and it was a complete walk-on. I didn't run at all, I just walked, relaxed, took my leisurely time and I still got a complete walk-on. I was on and off Hagrid by, I think it was eight minutes past eight. So fantastic, um, absolute success in trying to avoid uh, standing in the Hagrid's queue. However, that being said, we did wait 60 minutes um, at the front entry, so there was still a bit of a queue. Um, the Hagrid's queue did hit 90 minutes very quickly, so I suppose in some sense it is a much shorter wait, but you are still waiting. So having done Hagrid's by 10 past 8, left me plenty of time to do some other things. So explored Hogsmeade, uh, went on Forbidden Journey, um, got myself some breakfast, some lovely breakfast potatoes, and then also did um, Skull Island Reign of Kong. So not a bad morning at all, really enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you got a few tips. Hope that might help you with Ellie Bark admission. But for me, that is me done for this morning. It's only 10 o'clock. Got all that done in just two hours. Superb. Well, that's me back in the hotel. Um, it's almost lunchtime and I'm absolutely starving now. Just a late lunch, as you saw this morning. Um, with being at the hotel um, at Universal on property, Royal Pacific, as you know, um, 
I have limited options for where I eat. So I've been down to the sort of quick service food court area and I've got myself a chicken Caesar salad and treated myself to a bottle of Sprite. Uh, the Sprite here just tastes a wee bit different from back home. I'm guessing it's the amount of sugar in it, but it's nice. Uh, so I've got a chicken Caesar salad plus the Sprite costs $19.14 including the tax. So a bit of a pricey lunch. I would usually aim for a bit less, but when you've got limited options, you've got no choice. I'm starving, so I'm going to get this right in my belly. Well, unfortunately, it's time for me to say goodbye to Royal Pacific Resort. It's been good staying in such luxury. I will move on to the next hotel. I am excited to see what this hotel is like. Um, it's a value range hotel, so I'm about to get the bus over there. Um, which gives it a wee clue as to where it might be. Still on property, so I'm going to the Endless Summer Resorts uh, and I'm going to Dockside, Inn and Suites. I'm very much looking forward to see what that's like. So to stick with the budget, the budget theory, I'm going to get the bus from Royal Pacific to Universal and then get the bus from there over to Dockside, Inn and Suites. Just save me a little money in an Uber. I'm not pushed for time today, so yeah, why not save a few a few bucks? So I got the bus, as I said, I was going to from Royal Pacific to Universal. Was a bit of an error, to be honest. Um, it went around a couple of other Universal uh, hotels first of all, and into Univer into the theme park. So it took about uh, twenty-five minutes. However, I was straight on the next bus to. Dockside Inn and Suites, which is where I am now, and this is my hotel for tonight. Um, first impressions are really good, really positive. It's on the Tier 1, the value range of Universal on Property Hotels. Um, I'm in a standard double queen room. With my annual pass discount, this room only cost me $93, including tax, which is around £73 sterling which is super value for any hotel here in Orlando, let alone a nice hotel on property with Universal. So I'll give you a quick room review now. So just in the door, first things first, you have a full length mirror with a few cloak pegs either side, which will be quite handy. And then sharp right, you have your vanity unit. Hello, everybody. <laughs> And inside here, the bathroom, you have your toilet and your bathtub with stand-up shower. Also comes with some toiletries, shampoo, conditioner and soap. We will back out of the bathroom. And here we have, behind the curtains, a closet. Wardrobe has iron, some coat hangers, some spare bedding and a safe for any valuables. Then into the main area of the room you've got your two double queen beds and a standard just kind of unit with drawers, a large screen television. You've got your coffee maker and coffees here and in here you have a refrigerator for any drinks. Apologies that's just my fanny pack and bag there seat at the end and I was lucky enough to get a pool view. So floor seven, look at that, that pool is humongous with loads of sun loungers either side. So far first impressions of the dockside and suites here at Universal are absolutely perfect, could not complain. Um, I'm going to do a full hotel review, this should have been posted by now, so check it out, a link in the comments folks, have a wee look at that. Um, I'm going to jump on the iTrolley now, um, go along to the Orlando Premium Outlet, have a little shop, see if there's anything that takes my fancy. Just a relaxing afternoon for me now, a little bit of dinner, and I might go down to the pool later as well. Um, probably won't happen, I'll probably just crash and just fall asleep in bed because I'm absolutely knackered but if I've got any energy when I get back from shopping I might take a dip in the pool because it looks, it looks fantastic.
afternoon. You've just seen me doing a wee bit of shopping. Um, so I went to Orlando Premium Outlets to start with, and then I went to the Orlando Marketplace Outlets. The Premium Outlets is at stop one of the I Trolley route, and the Marketplace Outlet is at stop number two. The Premium Outlets will be the ones that you'll hear most about. You can get them at either end of the I Trolley route. You've got Premium at number one, which is, oh, north or south, I can't remember, I want to say north. And then you've got Vinland at the other end, which is south. So they're the two main premium outlets you'll hear about. However, if you really want a bargain, I think the marketplace outlets I went to at stop number two is a bit better. Um, they're like the clearance clearance sections. Um, a couple of shops have signs saying there's no returns from there. Um, I got something from Levi's and something from Calvin Klein. Um, both shops said no returns, can it all say was a final? That's absolutely fine. Um, paid very little for them, so that was quite good. Also got my Taco Bell, some to eat. Uh, good value for money in there. 10 bucks, got my salad bowl and my refillable soda. And then I got a cookie ice cream when I got back to the hotel here because I had to take some tablets and I'd not eaten in an hour or two, so I treated myself to a cookie ice cream and it was delicious. As you can see, I am down by the swimming pool here at Dockside and I'm about to jump in. I'd love to record me jumping in and showing you, however, there are so many families still enjoying the pool here at Dockside and I don't want to be recording any of that. Um, however, I would just like to say if you've enjoyed this at all, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye now.